Hey everybody, welcome to the Ever Canadian, and we have a T minus 24 days to the arrival of the Evercade EXP, the brand new handheld, upgraded handheld coming to the Evercade ecosystem. How cool is that, right? How cool is that? Anyway, just a little update on that, but let's, let's, we have to talk about the title of this video why the Evercade will not fail, or the Evercade will not fail, and these are the reasons why. I don't know, I haven't decided as of recording this what the title's going to be, but it's going to be something like that. And we're going to get into that. Why I believe that there's no way the Evercade ecosystem, the Evercade product line will fail. And this is a pretty kind of, is it a bold statement considering the EXP is coming out in, like I said, 24 days? Let's get into it. All right. So I've got quite a few reasons here, and I want you, if I don't mention a reason that, like, that you agree with or you... I missed a reason that you think might be contributing to my thoughts why it won't fail. Put it in the comments. But if you have a counter argument, by all means, go to town. Go to town. Okay, the first reason why I believe Evercade will not fail. And I'm going to through, go through a bunch, okay? So the first reason is it's the size of the company. They kept things small. They're not a big company. Blaze Entertainment, streamline their company approach, their approach to business. They don't have elaborate offices. They don't have a massive amount of people, which can hurt them on the other side for support and quality control and stuff. But they kept their company small and tight. Less than 20 probably workers at this time in, in the company. So they kept their cost down. So that's a huge thing. People and employees cost money as they should be, right? They're talented people, but they, they have really good cost control. And that ties into marketing. Okay, they don't do a whole lot of marketing. Some people go, so how could that's that's the counter argument to being successful? You need marketing to be successful. No, you need a good product to be successful. And let's talk about that for two seconds. Their product, they put out the first Hevercade handheld, a very cheap and affordable system that didn't have the latest bling and bling that people want, but it worked. Their product worked. It was affordable. It was interesting. They were doing something new. In the world of emulation, they decided to, hey, we're going to go into that world, but we're going in fully licensed and physical. So their product. Their product is their marketing. They captured a niche in a niche market. Retro video games is in kind of not niche, I should say, a smaller subset of gaming. Getting bigger and bigger every year with, you know, the advent of YouTube and tons of retro game channels. Retro video games market is started out small, but it's getting big. And they're inside of that, they're fully physical within that marketplace. And their product is their marketing because once retro gamers get a hold of it, um, they started talking about this on their channels and they started promoting it and at no cost to Blaze Entertainment, which I thought was remarkable. And let's talk about that, you know, that product hitting huge channels with almost a million subscribers, talking about their product positively because the product was good. It was affordable. It was doing something different, is doing something different. And it latched on. And since they have cost control on their size of their company, they don't need huge margins to be successful. So this let's talk about the community, the retro gaming community, because that is another part of the marketing arm. The community that's formed around the Evercade, and I like to believe I was a, a part of that, is phenomenal. Is it the biggest retro gaming community? It's like, is it as big as the one-up arcade groups? Um, you know, different, like different, um, you know, the mini arcades, the, the mini consoles, the emulation, retro emulation community. Probably not, but the community is growing. There's multiple podcasts, probably, you know, at least 20 or 30 channels that are either dedicated or are covering the Evercade on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. The community is growing. There's Facebook group pages. Um, there's blogs. There's discords. There's a magazine. There's a magazine in the community that comes out quarterly that is just fantastic and so well done. How many retro gaming products have their own magazine, fan fan magazine? Not many, right? That's phenomenal. So that's another reason why I don't believe 
the FRK will fail because, you know, the community is supporting it in such a positive, nurturing way that it's handling most of the marketing and all that stuff for Blaze because they care so much about the product. And now let's go back again to another reason why it won't fail. They decided to put out, after they've established success, a track record of commitment to quality, they put out the Evercade VS, a home console companion system that for the most part is almost, I'd say, let's without two con co collections, it's pretty close to 90 something percent. Uh, you can do the math. Uh, compatible with the uh, Evercade library, with the exceptions being the Namco collection. But you could take your games from handheld into the home console. And that's nothing new um, for gaming in general because the Nintendo Switch, um, you know, can go handheld to docked. So, but for retro gaming, this is pretty cool. And again, the community latched onto this and started, you know, it became successful. I like to think the Evercade VS is successful. Um, I believe Blaze has said that they've done quite well with both the Evercade original handheld and the VS. And the VS, they did a little something different with it too. You know, they added in the game of the month to the ecosystem. And so they're letting people test drive games every month. They have two cart slots. It might feel seem gimmicky, but it's something that the community will talk about. So another reason why it won't fail. They've got a track record now of success with systems. And then we fast forward to the EXP, which is coming out in a few weeks. They've got another upgraded handle. They're committed to improving their systems. And they've introduced Tate Mode, an actual way to play games that were designed for the vertical screen natively on the Evercade. How freaking cool is that, right? How awesome is that? I think it's pretty fantastic. So they continue to produce hardware. And the biggest thing here, why they're successful, they've done this through global pandemic, you know, circuit board and chip shortages galore. And they are just about to announce their, uh, produce their third product. How cool is that? To be able to do that where other companies have failed left and right all around them. To produce hardware and they've been able to do it and they they're not only in the hardware they've produced 35 collections in over two years 35 collections gained well over 300 games that you can play on their system sure you can play them elsewhere no one's debating that but you can play them there you can collect them physically you have your little it, it you know you have your ecosystem you have your community which is really going to do this all all during the pandemic with minor delays, uh, some quality control issues, no doubt about it. There's been collections gone out where the ROMs were messed up and misprints in the labels, stuff like that. But they be able to do all of these things and have the success that they're having and have a, such a positive community, that's why they won't fail. They won't fail. They, they, they are growing their business the right way. And they're growing the community the right way. And the community is helping them grow, which is really cool. So for me... It's important to recognize when companies are doing things the right way in the gaming space because we are overly a negative group of people. We just are. Gamers are no, they all, we always look for, for negativity. That's just a general sentiment of the global gaming community. Me, I like to kind of look at the positive side of things. But anyway, let me know what you think. Do you think they will fail? Do you think they'll bite off more than they can chew in the future? I, gosh, I hope not. But you never know. Crazier things have happened. Once again, I'm Pete. Hit that. Subscribe, smash that like button, ring that bell. You know, over 70% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. That makes me sad. Bye, everyone.